everyone. Welcome to the joint Troy City Council and Planning Commission special meeting for November the 9th, 2015. Before we have the roll call, just a couple of house cleaning items so it doesn't look like this is a little awkward because of the charter this evening. The new council members that were elected to take over today cannot sit at the table and participate in this discussion because they won't be sworn in until 7.30 this evening. And having said that, because of the charter, two members that are not going to be on city council are not here this evening, but their names are going to be called during the roll call. So it's not that they didn't want to be here, but because of the charter, their names will be called for the roll call, and the new members who are here this evening that are going to listen, take notes, and um, I'm sure we'll hear from them after they're elected at 7.30. So having said that, could I have the roll call, Ms. Dixon? Mayor Slater? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Campbell? Here. Council Member Gottlieb? Council Member Henderson? Here. Council Member Hoderick? Here. Council Member Pennington? back with the uh, Planning Commission for another joint uh, session. I think it's great that we're communicating with each other now through email and uh, with these types of meetings. So tonight we have one discussion item that's on the agenda, which is the uh, trails and pathways. And before I introduce uh, Brian Kishnick, the city manager, I'll just say a couple of, couple of words about this project because I've made it known as much as I can, that this is an important issue to me. I think uh, the residents of Troy, which I take great pride in listening to, have indicated that this is an important part of their community and that they want more walkability, they want trails and pathways. And we're here today to listen to a presentation. Good evening, Carl. Good evening, sir. So having said that, I'll ask uh, Don if you would have anything you want to say before we begin this evening. Only that we appreciate having these uh, joint meetings, and especially on topics of uh, prime interest to the uh, Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. If I could turn the uh, podium over to you for the presentation on trails and pathways. Okay, Mayor, City Council, Planning Commission. Thanks for having us. As you recall, at the last uh, Joint City Council Planning Commission meeting, we talked about, I think uh, uh, Commissioner Hudson brought it up, um, some education on some bigger projects that are happening in the city. And one of the things we got thinking about was the Planning Commission has a lot of work and, and makes a lot of um, very important decisions, as does the City Council. Planning Commission doesn't got to know all the information that's happening in the community, even though it may not directly relate to Planning Commission issues, site plans and PUDs. It's important to have the bigger picture in a, in a large context so you, you understand where all the pieces may or may not fit, whether you agree or disagree, at least you have the education. So we put together a few of these, and tonight is the uh, Trails and Pathways study um, that was um, communicated there wasn't a lot of information out there. So we have assembled a very, very strong team. Uh, everyone, Kurt uh, Bovency from the Public Works was the lead. Um, and I won't go down the, down the road, but you can see everyone here has had uh, some part of this. I will, uh, on their behalf, and maybe even on yours, Mayor, I will apologize for the unshaven look that people are um, pursuing this month for Men's Health Awareness. Um, 
good for them, and maybe there's other ways we could support it. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, um, what you're going to see is, um, how did we even get here? Where did we come from? And this, this creates me and, and a lot of us, and then a lot of people were part of this back when it started in, help me, 2008. Um, lots of plans, and Fred is going to talk about the plans. Um, but strategies was the latest. Uh, for those of you, and I invited the Planning Commission to come to the retreat of the City Council and staff, as well as the DDA. Uh, one of the things we do is we establish strategies. And this is what we're working on throughout the year. And one of the things that consistently comes up is identify and update funding for the Pathways and Trails Plan. And there it is, along with increasing walkability. And you all are probably aware of the move across Troy, where we make Big Beaver more walkable, which is a very difficult task. Um, but nonetheless, there's lots of plans. Uh, the strategies are of note lately. And this is, these are the things that guide us when we put this together. Now, you have to start somewhere. And you started back in 08, 09, and you're going to see that plan. It was a very ambitious plan. But you have to start somewhere. So these, uh, the staff went back looked at that and tried to find an alternative and something that could work. Understanding Troy doesn't have two things, right? Two major things. A band of railway and a river. So any community I've been, we've, e we've either done it on an abandoned railway, railway or along a river in the floodplain, and those are very attractive funding um, situations, projects uh, at, for conservation groups and from the State Department of Natural Resources. But we don't have that, so it makes the task all the more difficult to bring something uh, to the council, to the Planning Commission, and to the, to the residents where you would want to ride it. Because you don't want to keep riding in the street, out of the street, you know, backyards, front yards, side yards. Um, you really want it uh, to be a cohesive ride that's safe. So staff has looked at many alternatives, we put together one, had a public engagement that you're going to hear about, and then listen to what the people who showed up at the public engagement number one uh, meeting said, and put together two other alternatives that you can see, and then we'll talk about it at the end. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of listening to what uh, residents have to say. I see a few residents in here that I know very, very well because Kurt and I sat on their back porch. Uh, and talk for uh, a long time. Um, where were we on? Crab apple? No. Yeah. Crab apple? Crab apple. Okay. And so people are, are interested in, in having a dialogue. So another piece of this, I always, every community I'm in, I always think, you know, there's, there's always this person out there in your community that you maybe don't know, you don't hear about, who really is that diamond in a rock, right? That, somebody who really knows what's going on, somebody who's been around for a long time, somebody who cares about Troy. And Fred Phillips is that diamond in a rough where he's going to talk about the plans and his involvement. So go right ahead. Thanks, Brian. Uh, just in terms of formal disclosure, I am president of the Friends of the Clinton River Trail, uh, but that's not the whole reason why I'm here. Um, I'm a 41-year resident of Troy, and in terms of trails and pathways, I'm kind of the dinosaur in the room. Uh, the, the graphic on the screen shows some of the uh, more recent plans that have been done, and the timeline at the back of the room shows kind of the history of cycling and walkability issues throughout the city. The second reason I'm here is because I'm really familiar with the opposition that can arise to putting the trail in place. Uh, you see, my in-laws live, lived on North Livernoy, in Rochester Hills. The Paint Creek Trail is literally in their backyard. And when that was first suggested to become a trail, all of the neighbors in that area got together and began their opposition to the idea of the trail. They were concerned it was going to destroy the tranquility of the neighborhood. They were concerned that it would bring in an unsafe element. They were concerned their property values would decline. Well, the reality is I got to see firsthand how over time, all of those folks whose 
so vehemently opposed the idea, began to embrace the trail. And how they began to appreciate that it really adds a vibrancy to the neighborhood. It doesn't detract. It really improves safety. Criminals don't want to go places where there are infrequent random people going by. And property values were very difficult to determine, but what I can say is when my folks in laws passed away and we had to sell their house, it was the only sale because it was on the trail in the area for the last year and a half because this was right at the front end of the dive and all of the real estate values. And we had multiple people bidding for it. Third reason I'm here is because I do a lot of work with Oakland County Planning. And we do a lot of informal survey out on the trails. And one thing that's repeatedly told to us is that individuals and businesses looking to relocate often go to areas where there are trails. They specifically look for that. Places like Volkswagen, for example, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, one of their requirements to move into the town was that there would be a trail built to their facility. So I understand the economic value of it. I understand the concerns that go with it. And I understand the history of it. Now I'm going to turn over to Kurt, who's got the job of talking about kind of the more recent history and where we are now and what's going on. Thank you, Fred. As Fred mentioned, you can see the wonderful timeline came back together, back there, uh, dating back all the way to 1972. But more recently, the city of Troy did appropriate approximately $3 million um, to the trail and pathway uh, back in 2008. And because of the downturn in the economy, those funds were reappropriated for essential services. So that brings us to where we're at today. Times are a little better, and we revitalized the project. And uh, one of the first tasks we had to do was to look at and look at a route to, to develop or propose something to talk about, and, and we did that. We also needed to form a committee. There has been many committees formed throughout this since 1972, but we wanted to revisit that and reform a committee. And some of those committee members uh, were in previously. We have planning commission members. Uh, we have a traffic safety committee member. We have the committee members made up of just constituents, residents out in the city of Troy, and then various city staff, which are a lot of them which are here, here tonight to show support of the project. Funding currently um, in the capital improvement program, it's a, it's a three year project for trails and pathways that council approved. It's proposed to have $1 million for the next three years for the project. With the understanding that 500,000 of that 1 million a year will be city funds and the remaining will be outside or, or matching funds from other sources. So to talk about how the original route was actually developed is Alex Bell. We know that the city contains numerous gas features, right of ways, and walking paths connecting our various subdivisions throughout the city. But due to the lack of a traditional residential street grid, design in the city, we need to take an unconventional route to design a bike path throughout the city. <coughs> Based on the substantial work performed on the master plan pathway in 2009, the master pathways committee had several routes identified, as shown on this map here. So we looked at the plan and selected one of the more feasible routes from the 2009 plan that connected some of the more interesting natural areas that we have throughout the city. This next slide is a, a video of one such area. This is actually a forested area that's located in the rear portion of Sylvan Glen Park. You can see decades ago, um, they actually, the, the city actually um, uh, uh, built a trail through here, but it's really not connected. We knew that if we designed a bike path that connected the city to the Clear River Trail, the city would also increase its likelihood for grant opportunities, in particular, the Michigan Transportation Alternatives Program. While the city itself isn't connected to the Clinton River Trail, the trail system's closest point is located just one mile north of South Boulevard within this, the, the city of Auburn Hills. In May of this year, we approached the city of Auburn Hills with our plan. The city of Auburn Hills saw the value in our plan and committed to their support. To discuss the transportation 
through this program is Jennifer Schrupp from HRC Consulting Engineering. So the Transportation Alternatives Program is a source of non-motorized funding for specifically this type of project. It's a statewide grant program for um, non-motorized trail funding. Um, basically, the TAP grant sort of requires some sort of connectivity. So that's what we're looking at, connection to the Clint River Trail. And another goal of it was also connection to recreation. So Firefighter Park to um, Adams and South Boulevard was basically the parameters of the first phase of this program. So the route for this recreation path was from Adams and South Boulevard, along South Boulevard, over to Beach, down Beach to the subdivision. And in that, in that location, it would be a dedicated pathway, which would be off-road. And then through the subdivision <coughs> street, it would be a shared use path on road, up Coolidge as a dedicated pathway, and then through and into Firefighters Park as a combination of dedicated pathway, boardwalk, and bridge, and then down to um, the parking area, which would serve as a trailhead. In addition, there would be a stub up to Crab Apple, where there's an existing trail um, and a connection there where we continue as a sharrow. So we applied for TAP funding August 3rd um, with after design standards, and we put together some estimates. And the total for that project was 1.1 million, which was $500,000 out of Troy's pocket, and then 600,000 in grant money. Um, as a part of TAP grant funding, public engagement is a big portion of that. So we went through that process, and Brent will talk a little bit more about that. Thank you. So public engagement is, a, is an important component of the trail, the Troy Trails and Pathway effort, not only in terms of, of seeking input and listening to residents with their concerns and their ideas, but it's also an opportunity, an opportunity to educate residents about non-motorized trails and pathways in, in the city of Troy. Much of the, of the, of the uh, feedback that we received was in the, in the form of a narrative, and it's very difficult to quantify comments and, and suggestions and concerns. Uh, this is an example here. This is a, this is a comment board of one of our public engagement meetings. Uh, it's, 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 it's overwhelming how much feedback we had on, this, on, the, on the project. It's also difficult getting the entire community involved in this type of an effort. Uh, people tend to get involved when they're directly impacted by the project. We did hold two public engagement meetings. The first public engagement meeting focused on the recreation route that Jennifer explained. And, and also the TAP grant, and the, the second uh, community engagement meeting was more community-wide and discussed three uh, potential options. Uh, this is a map that shows the three options, and the red stars indicate uh, where people live that attended the, the second uh, public engagement meeting. And now Ashley Levin is going to talk, uh, provide some information on the notification for the public engagement meetings. So we recognize the challenges that public engagement presents. Um, but we really wanted to get as, as much input as feedback and feedback as possible. So for the second public engagement meeting, which was held in October, uh, we tried to advertise for that meeting as much as possible. We sent out over 2,400 mailing letters to residents about each of the different pathway options. Uh, we posted flyers in local shops. We had a press release. There was newspaper articles. Uh, we were very active on social media trying to advertise for it. Um, so with that being said, not only did we have the two in-person public engagement meetings, but we also had this online portal. And what this did was it provided an opportunity for residents to go on and ask questions or leave comments or concerns about the, the pathway so that it was just another way to engage with the public and get additional feedback. Um, and so Bill Zuri is going to discuss some of the concerns that we heard through the public engagement efforts. And really what we heard through the, the first public engagement and the public portal uh, we heard a lot of concerns of it related to safety, stranger danger, safety of children, just the overall security of the neighborhood, uh, as well as increased traffic and then concerns about pathways between houses, beside houses, or, or behind houses. This is a, a prime example of that picture up there. Um, when we kind of rolled it all up, what we really heard was we like the idea of the pathway, but not in our neighborhood. And uh, Caitlin's going to talk a little bit more about specifics of the comments. Um, so as Brent discussed earlier, it was pretty difficult to quantify after the first public engagement. So we took the online comments, the emails received, and just conversations we had with the residents and came up with 95 solid votes. Of all the votes, only a small majority um, were not in support of the project at all, but over half were in support of the project with uh, minor suggestions or with major suggestions to the route. 
And in reaction to the suggestions given, we came up with two additional routes, which Mark Mell will tell you about. Thank you, Caitlin. So from the first public engagement, we, we being the uh, Path and Trailway Committee, developed two additional um, routes, the what we call the transportation route and the hybrid route. We, up before you now is the transportation route, and the transportation route includes bike paths exclusively in major road rights of way, and that would be a dedicated path outside of the roadway, and then in Northfield Parkway, which is a collector road, and that would be a bike path, a dedicated, excuse me, a bike lane in the roadway, but it does include a little bit in Bowman Park actually in the park. And then the hybrid version is exactly what that appears to be. The hybrid is a mixture between the recreation route and, and the transportation route. So that the hybrid route does have examples of going close and near and in between houses in certain circumstances. And I'd like to turn it back over to Caitlin. So after coming up with the three routes, um, the transportation, the recreation, and the hybrid, um, we went into public engagement number two. We realized the importance of asking for specific votes for the routes so we could get a better feel of what people wanted. We came up with 206 votes. Uh, most people um, choosing the option for the transportation on major roads. So we kind of, we, we told you how we got to where we're at today, but I think it, we, we deserve a little opportunity here to take a step back and explain the different routes that we're talking about. Um, you know, the in-road, off-road, things like that. As, as people mentioned, we don't have the luxury of, of having a abandoned route right away, so we have to look at things like this. This is Beach, yeah, excuse, Beach Road heading north towards South Boulevard. This is an existing five-foot sidewalk um, that we're looking to propose to use. So what in its place we would propose to use would be this image in the upper left. So we take that five foot existing sidewalk and make it a 10 foot asphalt paved pathway. Um, again, the, the 10 foot reason is because AASHTO standards requires a 10 foot paved pathway with two feet of clear zone on each side. So it's a standard that we follow and, and uh, is required through some of the grant opportunities. Uh, the next is an in-road pathway. This is Northfield Parkway. Um, Northfield Parkway is uh, what we call a collector street, so it's 35 miles an hour with lower traffic volumes when compared to a major road. So the in-road bike lane would actually be a dedicated lane um, that you'll see up in the upper left-hand corner where it's, it's marked. So vehicles have their lane that they stay in and then cyclists would have their lane to stay in. And as you can see, the green area is just an example of what we can do when you come into an intersection. Um, this not only is good for cyclists to notify them that they're approaching an intersection, but also good for a motorist approaching the bike lane saying there's a bike lane here. So some, some things we can do with some simple paint to make it a little safer. The next would be a shared road pathway. This is an example of what we're proposing to use in local roads where you have very low volume traffic, lower speed limits, where the cyclist and the vehicle would actually share the same lane. Um, the vehicle may be behind the cyclist or in front of, we would indicate this by pavement markings called sharrows in the road. Um, if you're familiar, you're starting to see these a lot in Royal Oak. Um, however, we're only proposing to use these sharrows in local roads, low traffic volume, lower speed limits. Um, and I think that pretty much wraps up things and we'll hand it back over to City Manager Kishnick. So as you can see, the, uh, the process has been pretty lengthy, not just back to 08, but even in the past year or so, Kurt, that you guys have been meeting, maybe even longer than a year, right? about, a, about a year. So um, we started with one route and then had two public engagement uh, sessions, listened to what people were saying, and tried to accommodate them uh, with, with different options. So the green is, as Katie mentioned, was, was the most um, sought after and acceptable route so that's why Kurt was showing you what it looks like along the roadway um, 10 foot asphalt path um, as well as in North Northfield Parkway now the good news is yep go back now that's Northfield Parkway that's what it looked like but the good news is uh, you can get from a, a little spur here to firefighter park you can go behind the uh, nature center and there's some discussion whether or not you go keep going along south and then down Coolidge and some issues that that presents. 
We're trying to keep the sort of macro uh, view, though, because every one of these routes has its little nuances that we're going to have to work through. Um, but if you just go down a beach and then cut across, you can do a on Square Lake, you can cut across, have a spur into Firefighter, you can come around, it connects the um, Troy High School, and then it connects um, Bowling Park right here, right? And then if we continued on down Crooks, Wilshire to Big Beaver, it's a big deal to connect to Big Beaver. Right? And that's where that segment would end. But the reality is people are going to ride under the uh, Gen 8 foot wide, non-ash to standard, uh, so it wouldn't be eligible for funding. But certainly people are going to do it. You're not just going to stop there and see the underpass and say, ah, it's not wide enough. I think I'll just stop. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to go, and then you'll go through the Civic Center complex. Um, out Civic Center around the complex to Town Center and over to the dog park. So that particular route, which is, has come up um, through the discussions, appears to be the one, uh, the path of least resistance. Uh, but, you know, there, there are the other ones that we started with. Uh, we will tell you that and Jen and Kurt were the, um, the lead on the TAP grant where $600,000 was uh, coming in from the TAP grant, 500,000 in city money, um, that we were not, we are not funded for that grant now. And it's mainly as a result of uh, the public dialogue and engagement that says uh, people are against this project. So, uh, when people are against the project um, and threatening or Lansing or whatever, whatever it is, uh, that can have a major impact on all the plans that the city's been doing forever. And that's why, so we go back to the drawing board and figure out uh, what might work, listening to what people have to say. So Mayor and uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn it back over to you. And any questions? I'm sure there's one out of 20 people to answer. Thank you, Brian. Did I hear you say we are not eligible for this grant now? We will not be funded in this grant round. We will not be funded for what we requested funding for. We're still eligible if we go back for funding in a different route. Did you go to the Did that happen today? No. So the original was this, this, this to here, right? And this goes through crab apple, huh? red maple. This is behind in Firefighters Park, cutting uh, trees down back here behind some yards, right? And then into Firefighters Park. And this road, that's crab apple. Get my roads mixed up when there's so many fruits. <laughs> I think I need a clarification. <clears throat> because of input from the residents, we have been turned down for this grant. Is that what I'm hearing? For this first phase. And that so just happened recently? Yes. Yep. Okay. How much, how much pushback do you have to get before you lose a grant? Go ahead. Jeff. I mean, is this? Statewide, the public engagement is a very important part of the cap grant funding. So if if the engagement is that you know 61% of the people want to see it go somewhere else, the state does not want to fund that. And even if they funded that portion and got a lot of feedback after the fact, what we were looking at was a three-phase project. That was only phase one of it. So when we were thinking, well, let's go back and ask for the next segment, if we push through and got that, you know, how likely is it that they're going to fund the next piece when they're getting pushed back already? So, but when they saw the public engagement that we sent them and it showed that 61% of the people said, you know, try again, um, they, they really were not in favor of, of supporting it. They did love the fact that we're connecting to the park. They did want to see that connection to the Clinton River Trail. So we got that feedback that those things that we're still proposing to do in another route would still make us grant eligible. But because public engagement is such an important part of the town grant process, they didn't feel comfortable funding this project as presented. 
Well, let's just have Kurt say they like the project. Absolutely. Yeah. So, they, right, Jen, I mean, they like this project. Now it's just a matter of having the right route. Explain the rule and funding that they offer. <laughs> Explain the rule and funding, the fact that quarterly they review new grants. Right. There's, so the next, there was a funding application due on the second. There will be another one due in February. So it's quarterly um, that we can submit. There's no penalty against you for not getting it this time through. Um, and they would want to see, you know, what your overall plan is, because we're still proposing to fund this in phases. So, the, but like I said, the feedback was they liked that we're connecting to parks. We would still have the spur to firefighters. We would still connect to Bowen Park, and we would still be proposing to start at South Boulevard and Adams in the next round of funding. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how we want to handle this. But, uh, so, let's talk about how. <coughs> I'm just wondering if we're wasting our time when a small percentage of the city can determine whether we're going to get funding or not for a grant. So uh, let's let's uh, give everyone an opportunity at the table. What we're looking for tonight is not to take a vote on anything. Um, I think the city administration is looking for direction on this table, whether we're even going to look at this anymore. Um, and based on what I'm hearing tonight, I'm not so sure. Um, this is news to me. Um, we can start. Mike, we can start with you. I guess I'm a little disturbed. I guess a, an actuary would be freaked out knowing that such a small sample of a city can right. torpedo a grant. I think this is a great idea, and I think I'd like to suggest that some of our staff arrange for a greater effort to contact the population of the city. Those who may not be on the bike path and like the idea, but didn't necessarily attend the meeting. I, I think it's just too small a sample. That's kind of what I think I said. Um, it's. Um, I think had we known this going into it, it's such such a small group could have such an impact on, on a grant, you know, for the city, I think uh, we might have handled it differently. Well, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I, I don't think you ever know what segment of the population, what number, you you know, dictates whether you get the grant or, or not. I think, I think having, you know, writing grants and, and pursuing them, I think what you, what you need to do is listen uh, to what a small segment says, what a large segment says, and try to figure out, does it even make sense? So, um, you know, quite honestly, I was willing to come here this evening and look for compromises. You know, when you do get some pushback from residents on some issues, but if every time we come up with a, a plan throughout the whole city, if we're going to, you know, we should maybe even not think about doing this with a grant then. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we're saying is, as staff, when you look at this green coming down here uh, and across the Northfield Parkway, I think I can stand up here and say, and disagree if you feel differently, that that has very little resistance. And when we have the public engagement and you sat at those stations and you listened to everybody and you had them write on their little notes, that was the most highly sought after uh, avenue and it still provides by, a very small group of people that were no my staff too mm -hmm. is it my understanding that the transportation pathway then takes all of these people who want to ride a bicycle and enjoy nature and shoves them on to more publicly used roads with cars and all they get for their effort is a painted path. I mean, this is to me. This is not what a, a trail and a pathway is about. If you're a cyclist or a nature enthusiast, it's not so that you can be out in traffic and have your own lane. It's so that you can be part of nature um, and enjoy what the beauty is that that surrounds you. And and so this idea that we want to shove the cyclists and the people that want to walk just onto the the roads. 
to me, defeats the purpose of having the trails and the pathways. I see a lot of people in the audience raising their hand wanting to talk. This is not, this is a forum for discussion amongst the planning uh, commission and the council. After we're done, there will be an opportunity for the public to speak at the um, public comment if there's enough time. Councilwoman Holly. Um, I'm trying to catch up with where, with everything and process this in the few minutes we have as a joint team. Am I hearing correctly that the, the green path, the less desirable, that forces people off what we have originally envisioned, and I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but we're presenting an idea or, or pursuing a path idea, and it's a first, that's a first phase, the green path? No. Or is that the whole path? We, I'm hearing three phases, and then, so when I look at this green path, is that phase one now? Is well, that the new phase one? Yes, yeah, so it can't be a phase. What we want to get tonight is which one do you like? Uh, Planning Commissioner Cruz said, you know, she likes the one where it goes off-road, and that's the blue one, right? And it doesn't, it's not all off-road, though. It's on-road in many places because Troy doesn't lend itself to a beautiful, uh, naturally beautiful thing. So this right here is not, it's, it's just an option. You know, it, if you resubmit for the grant and you get the 600,000, so it's a million one, um, you know, rough numbers, you can get to about Bowlin Park, Jen. Um, so, you know, that would be, if you wanna do that, phase one, okay? of segment, whatever option, what are we calling that? Option green, how about that? Uh, transportation pathway. So then, you know, the trick is, if you if you do that, if, you'd want to bring it, finish it, bring it to Big Beaver, so that you can tie into the dog park. Make sense? Um, I guess where my thinking is going, because I'm, di I'm greatly disappointed that, that this turned left on us, like, so dramatically. Um, but it did. That's the reality. So the pragmatist in me is like, okay, what is the compromise that we start? I guess I'm thinking like the M1 people. We can't get our whole entire dream. Do we start somewhere? And this is at least a start. And then we grow this idea. And as the community becomes familiar and comfortable and sees the value of even this less less than our original vision idea, but as we start to see that, that then we go, can continue to go after grant monies to <coughs> having, perhaps creating a whole pathway right within our community, plus having attached to the Clinton path up there. I, I, I guess I hate to see us get so frustrated that we say forget it. Um, it, it can't always be all or nothing. We, we, we might have to look at a compromise. Councilman Henderson. The, I, I think a lot for me depends on whether or not we can get the, the grant funding. So, you know, if you, if you came to me and you asked me in front of my house if I wanted the pet trail pathway to come through my front yard with a shero, I might say no. That's 100% of the people sample that says no. So if it's a, if it's a 60% or 50% or 40% margin that we're looking for, wouldn't it make sense to go to all the homes that might be in the in that first phase of path and try to get a larger sampling rather than 100 or 200 you know maybe five or 600 and and then get a better maybe a better report on who's in favor who's not in favor uh, and and i if we don't get the, the grant you know i don't see that we should go full steam ahead without you know just spending city money we just don't know if people are going to embrace it and it's a lot of money invested I thought I heard that we nailed to 2,400. Was that was that something that I heard? So it wasn't. As as uh, City Manager Kishnick or whoever said at the beginning, we could send 10,000 letters to people, and unless it's in your backyard, or you're going to be affected by it, typically the, res the resident is not going to respond. 
Now, when we've done surveys in this city for the past 15 years, back to 1972, when you ask the residents what do they want, they want trails and pathways. But when you ask them for their input, they don't seem to give you input until it's, it affects them. And we get this type of pushback on almost every development we do in Troy. Everything we do is going to cause crime, cause crime. It's going to cause havoc. It's going to cause kids to die. It's going to, you know, it's always uh, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. Padma? What have communities, and I'm asking generally the community, hopefully all, somebody will have an answer. What have communities who faced resistance, what have they done to overcome resistance when they are applying for a tax plan? Maybe Fred could answer some of that. As Brian mentioned earlier, uh, Troy is in a very difficult situation. Uh, the example I gave was my in-laws uh, with the Pink Creek Trail. That was an abandoned railway. And so the decision there is either you do it or you don't do it because there's no optional other abandoned railway to work with. That's what makes the challenge in Troy so difficult, is anyone who's on the route, and, and the 2,400 letters that were issued were all sent to people who were on one of the three routes. So it was a biased sample in that context. Everyone can say, well, don't put it in my backyard, put it in somebody else's backyard. So you're constantly facing that challenge because you don't have the natural feature of a river or a railroad to follow. And so I, I think the only thing you can do is develop this portfolio of examples of all of the various surveys that have been done that show the general population demand for this and balance that against the sample of 100 or 200 who might not like it in their particular area. So I guess the question then becomes how do you um, approach the, is there a way to approach the people who are offering that tap grant not to make that a condition since we don't have to is there a way to justify that we don't have that whatever percentage that's required the other communities have gotten tap grant for very similar like look at royal oak it's a very similar situation you know the railroad is being used in royal oak it's not an abandoned easement there's no major utility corridor river running through royal oak so they end up using their streets you see cheryl's on roads we wouldn't potentially want to put them on. You know, they're on Crooks Road. But those are their options, and they did get tap money for some of that. But what they did is said, we have the citywide bike route, and now we're just going to make it more prevalent. We're going to put, put striping on the road where maybe we used to have signs. We're going to put up directional signs that say, you know, how many miles to different things. And so that was something that they did with their tap funding. In their downtown, they end up with an on-street bike lane on 4th Street. Um, so, so there are communities you know, where it looks a little different, there's a downtown that's established, and that's sort of where their destination is, where with you, you still have this mix of recreational area and transportation routes. So I think you can justify to the TAP funding people that you've been through the process and you've studied all the alternatives, and one is not maybe better than the other. You are pushing it from one person's backyard or front yard to another in this community. You don't have the option of an ITC corridor or an abandoned railroad. And you have this beautiful freeway that sort of segments where we have to cross under 75 or we have eight foot wide sidewalks at every one of those. You know, so we have very few options for where we cross bikes across that as well. If we use the grant. Right, we do have to follow AASHTO standards if we use the grant, which is a 10 foot wide path with two feet clear on each side, so we need 14 feet to build any trail. I, I can just say that the people that I've listened to, the residents that I've listened to that have written to me and communicated to me, the Trails and Pathways was more of a connecting the parks to one another, connecting parts of the city to one another, and the, the green doesn't do any of that. It, um, I think that in the totality of the, the residents that live in Troy, I think the majority would vote against that. That is not what they envision. Uh, the dog park, in my opinion, would, which is gonna have another wonderful park attached to it, 
is going to be a central part of the city in not too distant future. That should be included in this, this plan, in my opinion. I was going to come here tonight, and I've heard from many residents that we have a nature center up there, and we're, we're bypassing it. We're, we're going, we're going to speed down Beach Road and not pay any attention to it. The Green Morn doesn't even go to Firefighters Park anymore. Um, Except you could have a spur there. You, well, I'm just talking the way it is there. Right. I was going to come here tonight after looking at everything, talking to residents, listening to a lot of the pushback, and hope to take, maybe we could take this bike path down South Boulevard to Coolidge with, with a stopping point right at the uh, Nature Center, which would give the residents an opportunity to stop, go into the Nature Center, and utilize that, and, and it would be maybe bringing something to the residents that they don't even know that we have. It's a wonderful jewel up there in the corner that uh, we're, we're not even doing anything with it. And then I thought we could come down, come down Coolidge to Square Lake, and have another feeder that would go over to uh, Firefighter Park and give you an option that you could either start at the park, end at the park, or, or use the park. And then we would eliminate some of the pushback from the residents that are, that are up there in those subdivisions. And maybe we could accomplish the same thing and still be able to use what I think the intent of this whole thing is, is to use our, our jewels that we have here and what's in, and then take it to Northfield Parkway. You know, which makes sense, and then you can go down to Bowlin Park, and then you can, you know, you, you can take it down to what I think. When you go down Northfield Parkway, we kill two birds with one stone here. We make a, we make a wonderful bike path for the students of the Troy High School. Right. Mm -hmm. You can get to the high school from the north. You can get to the high school from the south. We make it safe. We make it, you know, so so your kids can feel comfortable and not get hit by a car like happened a couple of weeks ago on Northfield Parkway. And then take it to Bowen Park. We've got to get this thing to Big Beaver because that's where we want to make this walkability. And then take it over to the dog park. And that's, that's where I was coming to tonight. And I think we could accomplish a lot of this, um, get rid of some of the, I understand the residents. I, I, I understand that, but on the same hand, I think we can accomplish the same thing without doing away with our nature center, without doing away with our parks, and then we kind of take care of the west side, and then in the future we start working on, working on the other side of, of I-75, because eventually we want to connect Big Beaver to the east to the trails and pathways that are coming from, from Macomb County. So that's where, that's where I was coming tonight. I'm, I'm very extremely disappointed that we lost our grant without an opportunity to even talk about this at the table. But just for three months. We can go back and <laughs> I understand that. And, and I'm all in support of Councilman Harrison. I don't want to do this without help. You know, but if we're going to get consistently have a handful of residents come up to us and, and have the ability to stop a project, we have to find a better way to do it then. Did somebody else want to speak before Councilman Harrison? Uh, just a couple of points. And uh, as earlier we spoke, <coughs> and I'm going to try to sell this to the public a little bit, but the least effective way for somebody to come and criminalize a neighborhood is on bicycle right. or, or by foot. So I, you know, I don't think that that is as big a problem as, as what some people are doing. The other, the other aspect, and it was uh, touched on a little bit ago, but in the city of Rochester, again, being a realtor, I know that if, if somebody's home abuts one of those trails in Rochester, the values go up and, and there is a feeding frenzy when those houses become available. Uh, for sale. So property values I don't think are a significant uh, issue either with regard to a trail. And 
uh, again, I, I'm all for it. that first phase, connecting firefighters and nature center and the Paint Creek Trail. I think that that's the that's the piece of this. And we, we should, if we can fix that, do that, um, I think the rest will be easy. Well, I, yeah, I agree with you 100%, Dave. I I'm just frustrated to even attempt this again if such a small percentage can stop us again. That's what I'm worried about. But, um, Councilman uh, Pennington. Well, I don't think you're going to get much pushback with the green uh, <coughs> transportation pathway. When we talked about this earlier, um, I was uh, under the same assumption that Karen was, that there was going to be trails and pathways that ran through, through wooded areas. It wasn't just going to be a concrete pathway. So I was disappointed with the compromise that we came up with. Um, but with that, you know, with the green option, I don't think you're going to get much pushback or any at all. Um, but I was misunderstood. I thought that, you know, like I said, we were going to take these through, through, through pass, and it was, was not just to connect the parks. I mean, if it's to, to connect the parks, then, then that's what you're, you are attaining that. I mean, well, we're not attaining that with that green. Uh, that doesn't go. Well, it goes from Boland to uh, uh, one by Long Lake. It goes to Ball and then it goes up to the Paint Creek through to the uh, Clinton River Trail, basically. Yeah. With nothing in between. And then the question I would have for Kurt would be um, we didn't clarify this in the meeting earlier. Now, on, uh, the main roads, none of those are shareables, are they? Where they're shared, that's all the pass is on the correct sidewalk path? Uh, correct. The, well, that would be an example of what you would see on in the green route, so the transportation route. That would be on Beach, Square Lake, Coolidge, and a little bit in front of Troy High School would be the dedicated pathway. Okay. Um, what you would see on North, this is what you would see on Northfield Parkway. So the transportation route doesn't have any of those sharrows because it doesn't use any residential streets. Uh, we're, they we're only proposing to use those shared use or sharrow um, in residential roads. Well, you don't, you don't call that a share. What's this one called? Uh, right this, is, this is an in-road pathway. This is a bank okay, bank. the in-road pathways. Yes. There, there are none of those on the main roads other than North Road, Northfield Parkway. Correct. Okay. That would be a concern. Then. Okay, good. Comes from Can Can that green path option be altered as the mayor described? Sure. Well, yeah, I think no. we can do anything we want. Um, but, but, I mean, is that an we're you know, if we're going to give direction tonight, I guess I just want to say that I vote for that that idea of connecting. I agree with you. The Troy Nature Center, Fire, Firefighters Park. If we can do it such that <coughs> residents up in that area, you know, we're not intervening. Um, I would like to go for a grant again. I think we could get that. Um, I think we have the potential to get the support from the community for that personally and I I my thinking would be let's make that alteration let's try again in our earlier discussion meeting I think it was Tim Richnick that suggested that maybe we might even want to go around the back side up there at the farm by the Nature Center, actually come behind the, the, the Troy Farm and over to uh, Coolidge and then down, which gets you another significant. I think um, we were somewhat told that it's kind of cost prohibitive and we would have to, we would have to put, tra you know, build uh, wooden trails through there i will talk about the perimeter. But well, then you still have to do that. The and you're going to have to clear trees along the back of all of those houses there, and you're going to get pushed back there. Um, and not, I, I don't know that I would be in favor of cutting down trees. So <laughs> when you can accomplish basically the same thing by just going going up to Coolidge and coming down to Coolidge. Okay. Straight so across south and then straight down. I think the the main thing is to try and try and utilize the, the nature center. I think what I'd be concerned about is the right-of-way. You know, how much, how much right-of-way do you need to build a 10-foot pathway? 
Like I, I don't know, I'm not that familiar with Beach, but I think Beach is a tighter right away than South Boulevard. And to build a template right away, you're going to have to clear a lot of trees. And, and it would be, a very, it'd be very expensive to go down <coughs> Beach uh, versus cutting across South Boulevard to Coolidge. And, uh, and I think really that's probably the first step to look at the right of way, determine what's the most cost effective route to build your path. I would, but honestly, I, would, I think I would focus on the roads with the wider right of ways that provide you with the easiest access to build a pass. Um, just to piggyback on what Phil just said, uh, going across South Boulevard, that's a, it's, I believe it's only a two lane road. No, yeah, so right. there's, we've got a, probably a bigger right of way to deal with. We could have not just a, um, a painted thing, but actually a s completely curb separated, another, in other words, like a sidewalk, but it would be a trail yeah, across, right. across uh, South Boulevard to Coolidge and then down. So the, again, following your example of getting access right to the nature center, I think is terrific. Uh, what is on South Boulevard now? So five foot sidewalk. Right. So we're just we're talking about expanding that to ten. That's correct. correct. So there's so a the sidewalk order. already there, but that we're we're talking about just expanding to ten. <coughs> so it's already there. We still have the right of way. So going across South Boulevard shouldn't be an issue, and coming down Cool it shouldn't be an issue either. But I imagine that the right of way is quite wide. Well, it's 100, probably 120 foot right of way. Yeah. So we've got lots of room. We we could really develop it and it's a nice it's a nice view because when you still get part of the farm on your right and then you know then you got the nature center then you got the up. nature center and i mean let's be honest and we're running out of time here so we need to wrap this up but that little corner there between let's say coolidge and the nature center and clinton river trail you're just really trying to get to the trail mm -hmm. that's your that's your goal your goal now, whether you go through a subdivision or two subdivisions to get to it, your goal is to go from the nature center to the to the trails. So it seems logical to me to take the easiest route up there rather than go through the residential streets to get there. So I, if there's consensus from, from this table to pursue this grant again, I'm, I'm really disappointed that we're, we could have accomplished that without the pushback and it's not been put three months behind schedule. So I'm very, very disappointed to, to, that that happened and that um, that stopped us. But am I hearing if we change, we can go all the way down to Bowen Park with our 500,000 plus the 600,000 and if we take it up to Coolidge up to South Boulevard and over, and maybe not get the uh, the negative response on that. That we might be able to get that grant approved in three months. Is that? Is, did I hear that today? We'd be submitting. Pardon? Submitting, and then there's submitting. a couple months before we hear yeah, back. But you said they liked connecting to parks. They like the connections to parks, and they like that we were connecting to the Clinton River Trail. So we would be connecting to every single park in that path if we did it that way. Four parks, right? Plus the nature center. Nature plus center. Well, I'm counting as the nature center. Plus, plus, the nature. Plus, plus, three school. plus three schools. Yeah. Plus three schools. Venus Bowl and Trail. Mm -hmm. Hamilton. Mm -hmm. That's four. Yeah. <laughs> John, did you? I just was curious from the group. Was there any reason, or was this even considered the alternate path that's being discussed now? And are there any downsides that we're not aware of that you've already looked at and studied and we should know about? There might be some cost issues. So the, the easy answer at 704 is yes. With every path, John, there are some little nuances um, that we don't need to know about tonight. We just need direction on what to pursue so uh, the group, Jen, and, and Kurt can put some things together. OK, so we, this alternative path that the mayor was talking about, it wasn't looked at at this point. Oh, yeah, it was. I mean, it's all been generally looked at. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have engineering plans, do you? No. That I could see. <laughs> no. <laughs> the point is, yes, they've all been looked at. In fact, you've written them. Yes. Um, I've written some of them, and then uh, who else did? Ashley. Ashley. Yeah. Right here. So, 
you know, there's been a lot, but is, is there an issue that Kurt and I uh, were talking about right here? Yeah, there's a little bit of issue with road right away that we, that we need to get into the detail and figure out. Does that answer the question, John? Um, sure. No? <laughs> well, specifically, the mayor's talking about coming along south and then coming down by the Nature Center. I don't see that in any of the three schemes that are up there. And I just was asking, was that ever considered or looked at and discarded for some reason that we're not aware of or hasn't been discussed here tonight? The answer is yes. OK. And it's the things I just told you about. But that doesn't mean it can't be looked at it. And you know, these guys, can, uh, Jen, you can come up with any engineering, right? Absolutely. And that you can look at a call word, look at the span. Um, without, you know, this cross road, we don't want to do it, but that's a, there's lots of options when we looked at this right here. And I think, you, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, but if, if you take it straight down Coolidge and you're not doing in, into Firefighter Park off of Coolidge, you save a lot, you know, save some money by not having to go through that terrain. That's right. Right here, right, right. Yeah. yeah. This is all the back of the, the homes. back of the homes. And by the pond. Yeah. Right. And there's a better, better park. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's a beautiful, if, if you're riding a bike, it would be a beautiful, but I, I just think the trade-off would be better to, to just take it down. And then if you want to go to the park, you can go to it on your own. Right. So the key is you, you eliminate, mm -hmm. eliminate the entrance in the park, you eliminate most of the pushback. Some, and you know, I, I want to go on record. I'm, I'm not trying to do this because I don't think it should go through subdivisions for some of the reasons that I've heard. And I, Council, Councilman Henderson, you know, the crime and you know, you know, a lot of the stuff that I heard. I, I, I'm not. That's not the reason that I'm. I'm just looking. We should be using our nature center and our parks should be part of the plan, in my opinion. Uh, and then we got to we got to have to wrap. I, I just want to piggyback with the question um, regarding the right of way. Do all the all, all the three pathways require right of way acquisition, or is everything in an easement? And if there is right of way acquisition required, does this grant money or the total cost of this of the entire project include right of way acquisition? All three plans um, do not require right of way acquisition. The recreation plan, which is the blue plan does require some partnerships with Zion, um, Walsh College, the Water Resource Commission. Um, we have letters of support, but uh, none of the plans require land acquisition. And TAP grant does not cover land acquisition. But I think in the future, you know, once you get to the dog park in Central Park that's, that's going to happen here, then you take it north from there, and maybe we try to seek some grants from there. So we have consensus from the table to ask uh, administration to look at the green route, but readjusting it up uh, Coolidge, yeah. up Coolidge mm -hmm. to the Nature Center and a feeder over to Firefighter Park without going through the subdivisions. Um, between Beach and Coolidge and Firefighter Park and Coolidge. Yes. Okay. It's uh, 7.06. I have uh, one, two, three, four requests to speak. We have very limited time here. I'm going to ask when I call your name, did you keep it as quick as uh, <laughs> Mrs. Baker, I'm not going to put you first because that would look inappropriate. <laughs> um, I would ask you to be very quick. We're going to go to 715 if we don't get to all of these. We have a portion in the City Council agenda that you can come to the meeting at 7.30 and speak uh, at public comment in that portion of our agenda that starts at 7.30. So I will call on Dan Smith. 
Uh, good afternoon, Dan Smith. Um, Dan Smith, um, I, I feel a couple things. Um, this is deja vu. I used to live in Sylvan Lake, which was the connection between the West Bloomfield Trail and uh, the Clinton River Trail. And the NIMBY pushback from that was overwhelming. It was eventually uh, passed with through a grant, I believe, or a gift of some sort. And it has been great for the community. Nobody has any problems with it uh, anymore. Um, I think there's a failure of communication a little bit because we're still looking at the old proposed pathways as opposed to uh, some things that were taken away. It, it appeared in watching the presentation that we're just looking at the green trail and then the yellow trail coming across um, Square Lake Road over to uh, Sylvan Glen, I believe it is, and then basically the yellow trail coming down. So everything north of Square Lake has been eliminated, I believe. More or less, I guess nobody's here to answer my questions. But the so, portion gives you an opportunity to speak, not to have. They knocked it out of the park. I came here with a proposed plan, and I think what they proposed is exactly what I thought they should do. There's an overlap area. from the South Boulevard over to the beach. If we could, um, this is a this is a portion of the meeting where the residents speak. We do not speak to rebuttal to them. Um, we just give them an opportunity to speak. Terry LaFontaine. Can you come to this microphone, please? I'll just speak loud. No, exactly. Can everybody hear me? It will. It will. Yeah, yeah. 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 be recording. Okay. Thank you. First of all, I am so sorry we're such a disappointment as constituents to you. Um, you know, we spoke, and uh, for you to sit there and say how disappointed you are, maybe you should have come up with these plans before applying for the grant. That being said, I still think it's very unsafe for bikers to go through neighborhoods. So I hope you stick with the green route, keep it out of the neighborhoods. I, I just foresee a lawsuit in the city with, after some bicyclist gets hit. I don't care that people ride through our subdivisions, but there shouldn't be a designated bike route in subdivisions. I just don't think it's a good idea. Um, and I've been a 44-year resident of the city of Troy, not a registered voter that long, but 44-year resident. And this is the first time I've been disappointed in my city council. So I hope you stick with what the people spoke and stay with the green route. Thank you. James and Judy Andrew. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. I'm Jim and Judy. Could you expand that map up for the blue very by Firefighters Park, please? And could you back it up to the picture of our home with the blue? And my bedroom is there. The concern here for us is, is the impact of how it blue comes there. across. The, yeah, how it comes across the top of uh, the ponds in Firefighters Park. And as Brian is showing there, that's my house there. And on the other side of the blue is my neighbor. Steve Nadalski's house. Uh, behind our house is woods to the pond, approximately 30 feet of woods. Uh, the blue path that come along the north side of the uh, pond would require removal of some of that woods because you need the large 14 feet wide. I believe that is uh, wetland, so it would require a boardwalk also. Our view, we live there because of the view we have here. I've lived in Troy for 36 years. I've lived there for 20 years. The other main concern is, if you notice where the blue comes out on the crab apple, that's coming right by our house. If you back up the, the photos there, you'll see my house. And it, that's it, my it had the photo room. of the blue house on that's it when you first saw it. Our there. house, that's why we're upset. So yeah. basically, we have a uh, eight foot wide sidewalk now where the residents come to the park. This would require an expansion of that with, you know, with increased traffic, and it would be within 10 feet of our bedroom and bathroom where the cat would be. And thus, that's uh, uh, what we don't want to have for the environmental thing. And I would appreciate what's been talked about here, and we would fully support the air with the holes that you're looking at here uh, as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Bethany Baker. Thank <laughs> you. 
this is fine. Um, okay, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Mr. City Manager, and of course the Planning Commission, thank you so much. Um, we realize that um, most cities do not have this option to have voice, so thank you so much for giving us this option. I'm sure it's pretty taxing on you, and we do appreciate it. Um, and to have that voice, um, I'm here on behalf of the Hills of Charnwood, um, and so it is, goes straight through our, our subdivision and in my backyard. Um, personally, um, my playscape or whatever you call it is about five feet from beach and I, we're okay with it. We're okay with it because it's for the good of the people. However, um, almost 100% of the neighborhood do not want it going through our yard or through the neighborhood. Um, and so I guess what we ask is I'm really pleased to hear what the mayor has suggested um, from the south to Coolidge and um, definitely um, touching the Nature Center and Firefighters Park. I think that would be just fabulous for the kids and, and the, for the community. And so um, just basically just to ask for other options and to look at that and um, to hopefully make that work so that um, our neighbors can feel comfortable with that, um, but more importantly, um, for the good of the city. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Denise um, I was here on behalf of the North Glen Park, which we didn't talk about at all, so I was wondering if we could just take a quick look at that and see what the plan is. My property is directly, my, all that separates me is the driveway, so I have a concern, you know, where that's going to fall into place. We, you know, bought our house simply for the fact that it was secluded, it's a dead-end street, and I have a concern not so much with crime and all of that, which could happen, but just the traffic. I mean, right now we have just the neighbors in the yard or in the park, and now, you know, right outside my garage, I'm gonna have people, bikes. So I'd like to see where the path will be coming through on that part, and that's all. Thank you, Nick Best. Can we see where it's That's not an option uh, tonight. You're not, you're not considering that one, Thank you. Um, pretty much want to thank the council for their time and, and listening to the residents because I think the biggest uh, miscommunication I'm seeing is people for bike trails, against bike trails, stranger danger, whatever. The picture on the website is you ask for your residents, they're going to tell you they want a bike trail. They're, I mean, all else being equal, who would be opposed to a bike trail? Um, but we put, we put something out that's on the website, like a, it looks like a trail. This probably should be on the website instead, um, which are you know, bike routes through a lot of neighborhoods. I think if you listen to the residents, they're telling you they want you to build cool things. They don't, aren't all concerned um, that staff is about the grant. I think if you took that 500 grand, you spent it, connected a cool park to a cool park or a cool high school to a cool middle school, um, a couple of those, and then you know, I think you get a lot of support showing that you're not just bulldozing <coughs> through um, city streets, because I think that's that's not what anyone's asking for and be excited about is um, Northfield Park very much. Thanks for listening. Thank you. One more, Rick Beach. Okay, if anyone else wishes to speak, uh, you'll have to come to the city council meeting. Oh, come on, I'll let you go. I don't have a sheet for you, but. Um, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to sign up, so I can. Awesome. I'm David Ashland. I have a completely different take on all of this. I've ridden every route that was mentioned tonight. I'm a very avid cyclist, and from April until uh, until about November, I'm riding the city streets. I think in the future, the young people of this city are going to want routes to get for recreation. They're going to want routes for their business activities. We're going to want routes for pizza drivers to put a pizza on the back of their bike and find their way to a home. I think a play route like this being proposed is fine. The Clinton River Trail is a beautiful recreation play trail. The Orchard Macomb Trail, a nice recreational trail. The Paint Creek Trail, a beautiful recreational trail. I favor street usage for cyclists. I think Royal Oak has the right approach. I think multi-use streets with the best marking we can have, putting money to educating our automobile drivers and our cyclists to shared routes is the right way to go. 
It's more economical from a dollar expenditure standpoint. It takes no, no cyclist past the bedroom of somebody's house. It does none of those things. And over a period of years, speak faster. Over a, please, please up. Okay. <laughs> over a period of years, we'll have an effective routing system for walkers, cyclists, and powered vehicles. I think we need a different look completely at this uh, bicycle routing through the city. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, thank you to the Planning Commission for, for being here tonight. I think maybe we accomplished something. So we're. Pardon? We got to do. We're adjourned, and I'll uh, we'll see you in the council chambers at 7:30.